mythology of the phoenix, to the symbolism of doves, to bird watching as an escape during the pandemic. Birds ignite the imagination and help connect us to nature. Yet bird populations have been in decline. It's estimated that the North American bird population has decreased almost 30% in just the last 30 years. And with this decline, we're also losing the important ecosystem services birds provide, from their role as pollinators and seed dispersers to serving as natural insect control. By creating a bird-friendly garden in your own yard, you can help support these vital members of our ecosystem while also increasing your enjoyment and experience of your own garden. We're talking to Texas master naturalist, Catherine Wells, to learn about a few things that we should keep in mind when creating a bird-friendly space in our own yard. Hi, Tyler. Such a pleasure to be with you today. And of course, always love talking about birds. And the fun thing for us here in Flower Mound is that out of the 615 or so species of birds in Texas, 500 or so of them regularly occur right here. And we're also in that central fly zone, that migratory route that birds take in the spring and the fall. And 98.5% of those migratory birds come right through our area, about 333 of the 338 migrating species. So we have lots of opportunities to help our feathered friends and to enjoy them while they're here. Absolutely, it sounds like we're in a really important location to be able to do that. So when people are thinking about things that birds need or that they would need to provide for birds in their yard, I think the first thing that most people think about is big trees, right? Like birds need trees, but not everybody has a big yard or room for a large tree. So what else should they consider? That's a good question, Tyler. And when you're thinking about what birds need, they need the same things that you and I need. They need food, water, shelter, safe place to have their families. And trees are awesome. But if you're in a situation or your landscape is a little bit smaller and you don't have room for a tree, there's lots of other layers that you can add from ground covers and vines to flower and vegetation to shrubs to understory trees. And then if you have the room, the tall canopy trees. And each of those layers provides habitat, shelter, nesting area. And if you're adding the right kinds, the native plants, especially ones that offer berries, fruit, seeds, nuts, nectar that sustain our insects, you're also giving them the added value of a food source, like a bed and breakfast right in your backyard. Nice, a little bird bed and breakfast. Yes. Awesome. So you mentioned food sources and, you know, the nuts and berries and seeds being one food source. You also mentioned native plants and the support they provide for insects. Why is that important? Excellent question. And so the native plants and the insects that depend on them have co-evolved over time. And most of the insects and most of our beneficial pollinators have host plants and they can only eat those host plants. So that's the important sort of symbiotic relationship. And then all of our birds, really, I think almost all of them, have to feed their young insects. So if they eat, if the adults eat berries or seeds or nuts, their babies cannot, just like our human babies can't sit down to a steak and baked potato dinner. We have to give them a little something different to that digestive systems can handle that. Right. And so insects and invertebrates, caterpillars, those are what they need to uh, feed their babies. Okay, that's important to consider, right? So what else can we do when we're creating a, a bird-friendly space in our yard? Um, We've got water or we've got food sources, but what about water sources? Water is an important part as well. And it's really easy to provide that depending on the space that you have. Um, an ideal thing is just a concrete bird bath that will give you the grip that the birds need so there's not a slippery surface. And um, just keep it filled, keep it clean. If you can keep the water moving with a water wiggler or a dripper or a mister or that sort of thing. And then if you can um, offer some escape root or perch, a boulder in the middle or a large rock, a little stick that they can perch on, that will give the very smallest ones a feeling of safety when they go that they're not going to fall in you know several inches of water and then if you put that in an open space so they can kind of see who's watching them they're very vulnerable when they're drinking or bathing um, they can kind of make sure they feel safe but as long as there's cover nearby they can flee if they need to into the safety of the um, of the habitat Awesome. So we've got shelter and gardening in layers to provide different layers of shelter for different birds. 
We've got using native plants and plants with seeds and nuts and berries. We've got a water source. Um, what else could somebody do for their yard? Uh, would it be something like reducing the usage of ides in their yard or other options? Reducing ides would be ideal. So uh, herbicides, uh, fungicides, pesticides, rodenticides, all the ides, if you can reduce those or eliminate them completely, that would be great because when you're using those, you're treating a problem in isolation mm -hmm. and it often has unintended consequences and collateral damage that you didn't think about. For example, if you use a rodenticide and then an owl comes down and eats a mouse that has eaten the rodenticide, the owl is not gonna make it either. On the other hand, if you just let the owl take care of the mouse himself, then problem as a natural solved. problem <laughs> solved, natural predator-prey relationship. Yeah. Well, great. It sounds like there's a lot of ways that we can get started by creating a more friendly space in our yard. Um, and if you guys want to learn more, you can do so by going to flower-mound.com garden. Thanks for joining us.